from the streets of Canada, we head to another unique racetrack that, for this race, 1UP will be visiting for the very first time. The Nitro National Series takes on Simtel Park in Wisconsin. It was beautiful triangular one and a quarter mile oval is going to be a lot of fun for the drivers and the fans alike for 80 laps of non non-stop racing action the high speeds high intensity and this is just going to be a great race and sh i'm sure because it's th these guys are diving off into the unknown we don't know what this track is going to bring but these guys are about to prove it to us and we're about to find out and alongside me to bring you all the action once again is duke ansack for today's race and like I said this is an unknown these guys have never raced in Simtel Park before but I'm sure with all the with practice and qualifying they got they should be able to handle this without a problem. Oh absolutely but this is such a fascinating racetrack you know when you look at it from the top it looks slightly like a Daytona like a Talladega kind of with that trioval look a straight uh, a completely straight straightaway two corners and then a long uh sweeping uh straightaway that is also really a corner here uh but that's actually on the back stretch uh at this track so really this is going to be a, a lot of fun we've got 24 degrees of banking in the corners we got 16 degrees of banking on the front straight away here it's gonna it's gonna be a ton of fun i, I think that these drivers are gonna have a great time racing today i think we're gonna see a lot of action we've got a pretty wide surface here so it'll be uh it'll be good I, i'm excited to to see how the race plays out um and we got 80 laps ahead of us to see all the action and all these drivers really uh put on a good show for us absolutely i wouldn't expect anything less from these drivers who have put on such a good show for these for the first half of this season as we can now bring you the starting lineup for today's 80 lap race we have joshua michaels on pole position this time around and kasim adnan lines up alongside him keon daly lines up right behind his teammate in third with two of the finish line motorsports fords in fourth and sixth mixon and rfj but the big story of the week has to be the championship contender, Alex Fergette Rube, starting fifth. This will be it for him. This is his last tour of the Nitro National Series. So he's got one last chance to win a championship, and it all starts right here. Yeah, that was absolutely a massive announcement that we got this week from Alex Rzeparub, hanging it up at the end of this season. And I'll tell you what, he's right in the thick of it uh, right now uh, for that championship, as you said. And today is a great opportunity uh, because he's starting up there in fifth, like you just said. But Ryan Griffin is main competition, starting down in 12th place. So, uh, hey, Simtel Park today, going to be a fantastic race. We're going to have a lot of storylines to watch. We're going to have a couple pit stops in there. Um, the whole team's getting involved in this one, and uh, I, I am really looking forward to it. So with that being said, we have 80 laps ahead of the drivers here today, and we are ready to bring you the action. It is Simtel Park for the 1UP Nitro National Series in 2023, and the green flag is getting ready to fall, so stay tuned because you're not going to want to miss a second of the action yet to come here today. With Michaels and Ednan ready to lead us to the green flag, it's time to bring the action at Sintel Park. We're underway for 80 laps as the green flag falls on the field. Michaels, it is, actually looks pretty even for the front few rows, but I expect that to change as soon as they dive it off into turn one. The inside line is just going to be so strong around here. Michaels clears for the lead out of the first corner. Yeah, and they really run that middle line through that corner. But as you see, here's our back stretch. Uh, not a straightaway at all. It's definitely a corner. Something noticeable down there. No break at all coming out of turn two. We've got one. Uh, our outside pulsator is falling back through the field right now. It looks like uh, it is caught up. And uh, yeah, Joshua Michaels leads our first lap. And here's Keon Daly all the way up on the outside by the wall. Uh, running side by side for second place with Alex Fregeparu, who has gained a couple spots on the restart there. So, yeah, things happen quickly here at Simtel Park. It's a short track, and they go really fast around these banked corners. And that outside lane right now is not performing very well. I don't think it's been rubbered in quite well, but I, I assure you, once it is, they can use they will use that to its fullest extent. As Michaels already with a three-quarter second lead over Alex Fergeparub in this three machine. For, for the first and only time, Alex Fergeparub will visit this racetrack in his career. Hopefully he can pull it in victory lane once it's all said and done. But to do that, he's going to have to get by a very fast Joshua Michaels, who leads the, the third lap. He's led every lap so far. And 
it's been t we we know now that Michael's going to the Superstar Series next year, so this could be his last chance to get a Nitro National title as well. Yeah, yeah, it, it totally could be. And this 18 car looking really good right now uh, out front in this field. And, and you can watch, it's so interesting, the line around here. It's actually a pretty similar track to like Dover, Delaware uh, kind of place where you got high banking all the way around uh, in, in, in both of the straightaways. And of course, our back stretch is completely curved. So it's a little bit like uh, Richmond in that sense, uh, sort of, if you will. So um, yeah, very fascinating track, very fast. Um, and you can see that the bottom lane here isn't really the bottom. They're about a lane and a half up off the bottom in turn three and even farther up off the bottom in turns one and two. But that's just the way you got to go around here. The middle lane is definitely dominant so far. And, and as these tires wear, you might see people start to move up a little bit uh, to get some momentum. But there's a big bump coming out of turn two. So, um, yeah, I'll tell you what, this is a, a very fascinating racetrack. And it's going to be interesting to see how this race develops uh, throughout the pit stops and if we get any cautions in there as well. But uh, yeah, we're watching the battle for the lead heat up. Alex Roget Barub on a rampage is catching up to uh, Joshua Michaels for the lead. The whole field now separated by six and a half seconds as Joshua Michaels c continues to lead. He's led all six laps so far, but Alex Roget Barub in that three machine is closing in and closing in quick. You see Glenn Mixon has got the fastest lap at the moment right now, but he runs in sixth behind the top five of Michaels, Alex Roget Barub, Delello. Daly and Riley Hooper to complete the top five. Alex is closing the gap. Now a quarter of a second between he and the leader, Michaels. Yeah, the, and you know, they're going fast enough to get some draft here. Um, I wonder if that draft is helping down uh, the front and the back straightaway, this three car, and then everybody behind as well. Um, it seems like it might be. But in the corners, you really don't want to be directly behind the car in front of you. You want to have a little bit of fresh air on that nose, get some downforce, make it through the corner, and then get a good run up off. So we'll see if this three car can do anything out of the corner here over that big bump. And it looks like just can't kind of staying put, even losing a little bit of time right there to Joshua Michael. So, hey, it's early in this race. We're only on lap nine. Uh, and this is so far uh, been very calm for Joshua Michaels, but that three car getting bigger in the mirror. Let's see what the gap is at the line. It was two tenths, now it's three and a half. So Michaels is starting to pull away a little bit. And here's Zachary Delello. Man, the tenacity of this driver. He's come so close to winning races. Left, right, and center this season. He's finished second a bunch. He's come really close a bunch of times. Could this be the day that Delello gets that maiden win? I feel he's Superstar Series ready despite not having a win. But I'm sure Team Dayspring would love to see him get to victory lane before they give him the call up. Yeah, for sure. And, and this driver, just absolutely fantastic. We've, we've seen that car run up front all day or and, and all season, really, you know, and it's ve it's kind of crazy that restart or it was the start of the race just shuffled everybody so much. Joshua Michaels kept the lead, but Kasim Adnan fell way back, uh, all the way back to seventh place. Well, uh, Alex for came up to second place from fifth and Zachary Delello started this race in seventh place and is all the way up to third uh, so far as everybody's running single file. That's a great day. And here's Keon Daly, who started in third, has lost one position on the day. Uh, it's a tough uh, tough start to the day, but still running still running up there, right with the leaders, not even a second behind. So uh, having a very solid run so far. Uh, good start to the race, and uh, it set yourself up well uh, for what's to come. And remember, this is a driver looking for a ride next year. Kings Motorsports is shutting down at the end of 2023. And while Joshua Michaels has his future set, Nikki Martinez is working on her future after that big win in Canada. This guy, he's, st he's still it, it, kind of being left out a little bit. He needs to he hopefully find a good ride soon because that he's proven he can win races. So it's just a matter of time, I feel, before he gets a good deal signed for 2024. That's absolutely true. You know, I, certainly there's a lot of teams with eyes on that driver right here, and, and a, a good performance is going to only help you uh, in, in the job search for the next season, you know. And uh, it, it's interesting, I, I'm sure that, you know, a lot of these drivers that are looking for rides next season are watching that three car run up front and uh, battle for a championship, and they're thinking, hmm, that, that car might be available next season. We'll see what happens. Uh, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure the team owner uh, is now has a eye even more on the rest of the field uh watching 
uh, owning that three car. But hey, this 18, Joshua Michaels has been able to hold everybody behind, uh, maintaining that gap of about two two to three tenths uh, all the way around the course. And yeah, Alex Rajabaru right now just can't do anything with him. And it looks like Keon Daly might be in a little bit of trouble here. We were just talking about him. Oh, he's no. Slowed. He's got. He's lost the oh. motor in that thing, his Keon Daly. We were just talking about how good a run he was putting on in that 52. Now is going to be the first retiree of this race on lap number 16. Definitely mm. a heartbreaking situation for Keon Daly. He was having such a fantastic race, and now it's all for naught. But he'll suit up and get ready for Indianapolis next week, but his day's done already. Wow, that is an extremely tough break for a driver who is having a really solid start to the day. Um, and we were just typing him up so much, and now uh, he is off the racetrack. So that's a tough, a tough, tough break for that 52 team. They're going to come back, though, and have another solid outing. I'm sure of it, uh, except it won't be with that motor. <laughs> that motor is done for at, after this race. So here's Joshua Michael still leading the way over everybody and he is still maintaining that two to three tenths lead that he's got but now uh i'll tell you what somebody that's had been a really great day is riley hooper started in 11th place now after uh after joshua or after keon daly has gone out of the race he's up to fourth place that is a fantastic start to this race uh from 11th to fourth a lot of passing on that restart or on the start of the race and really has made it up there so the top five have pretty much separated themselves from this group from about six, seventh on back. And Nan's all by himself now in six. But here's the battle for a seventh on back. Aiden Clare, Chrissy Spletzer, Austin Runkle looking for his first top ten of the year today. And James Ellison rounding out the top ten. So there's a lot of guys looking for good days and the window's open because we've seen, we've seen even the best of these guys are not invulnerable today. Let's see how it shapes out. Yeah, for sure. And, I, you know, this is a great place to have a good run. Um, and, of course, every track might be a great place to have a good run. But this track especially, I mean, it is a tough track. It's fast. It's uh, self-cleaning. Um, if you go low to try to avoid an accident, you're going to be in it for sure. Um, and it's really, it's obviously, as we've seen, tough to pass. You know, you really have one and a half lanes to work with here. And all of these drivers are running in them. So you can't really go around anybody like that. You just have to beat him on outright speed and that's tough so having a good start today and then even having that lead to a good finish at the end of the day um is going to be really important for a lot of these drivers it's going to be a great momentum builder uh because your crew is getting in on the action today as well um and then of course confidence for the driver everybody needs a little bit of more confidence in their in their skill their ability uh and their what they've put out on the track and, and to get the results is really a confidence improvement for everybody out here so a uh, good finish goes a long way especially for a lot of these drivers yeah and you can see the top five they're all running in pretty much single file formation at the front these guys are just i think i feel like they're content to just ride it out to the first pit stop there they know how their car handles now they know what adjustments they need to make and i feel like they'll be able to do it once this the first round of pit stop start which should be in about eight to ten laps from now so these guys are just riding it out i'm sure if alex wanted to take the lead he could but i think he's just content now to let that 18 lead the opening stages because he wants to be out front by the end of it yeah that's definitely you know and until that pit stop i, I don't expect anybody to be too aggressive you know if, if you're too aggressive in this race uh to start it you might find yourself out of it uh before you've even gotten to that pit stop and that's just um, nobody really wants that for their for their team, uh, and the crew chiefs don't want it for their drivers. So everybody's kind of agreed here. We're just going to ride along, single file, make sure that we make it to the first pit stop, make it to the second pit stop as well. Uh, and, then, and then after that, we're going to see the action really pick up in this race after that second pit stop, even after the first as well, um, because that's when everybody's going to start getting aggressive. That's when you're putting it all on the line to try and go and win this race. And we're already over a quarter of the way through this race. We're on lap 26 now of 80. Joshua Michaels has led them all so far. And looking back now, that's the battle for 40 if they're there between Sam and Oskin and Ryan Soper. They're about two-thirds of a lap down right now to Joshua Michaels in this 18 machine. And you can see the gap between Glenn Mixon in fifth and everybody else from sixth on back. These top, This top five has really put a gap up between themselves oh, yeah. and the rest of the field. 
Yeah, they are moving and grooving right now, setting a pace uh, that nobody else can quite keep up with. And and if if it does go green all the way until we get pit stops, which it is looking a lot like it will right now, uh, if that does happen, it's going to spread this field out even more than it's spread out right now. And these leaders will have to deal with lap traffic. And as you can see, it is tough to pass here. So um, the lap traffic could play a big factor in this race. We've seen it before. Uh, in the past plenty of times that lap traffic uh, has modified the outcome of the race um, and it could very well happen again today. Absolutely. These guys have got to be on top of their game to deal with the back markers and even some of the midfielders who might be having a rough day of it. But here's jo Alex Richard Ribs actually gaining on Michaels just a little bit out of the final corner. Let's see what the gap is at the line. He, well, he didn't gain. He might have lost a little bit earlier in the lap and then gained it all back in the second part. Because I saw him making yeah. big gains on that 18 through the second half of the lap. Right, starting at about here, he's really g gaining time on this 18. So only time will tell if he's able to get by. Maybe on the pit cycle he'll be able to, but. I believe the tires aren't going to be that much of a factor here, so maybe he, he could try an undercut or an overcut, see whichever mm -hmm. one works. Yeah, the, the problem with the overcut is you really have to commit to it. So um, I, I don't know. I don't know. I think that this first first cycle, you're really preparing yourself for what you're going to do in the second cycle. So um, if you go long on this one, hopefully you go short on the next one. I think if you go short on this one, you'll want to go long on the next one just to mix it up, see what you can do. I think that that uh, one of those two could possibly be a winning strategy here today. Um, and we saw last time out, Alex Fergeparu was one of the one of the cars that played a really great strategy. Uh, so crew chief on top of the box there really uh, put together a solid uh, solid race plan last time, and I expect uh, some of the same today uh, from that team. So we'll see what happens. Um, and Joshua Michaels out front though. I mean, I'll tell you what. At the end of the day, you got to be faster than the leader if you want to have a chance to win the race. And you can try to win it on pit road, um, but just try to get out front that's that's the best way to win it yeah and it looks like some cars have oh, made the move to pit road michaels and delello the first one first of the leaders to dive off alex for Rub, he's gonna stay on the racetrack pick up a bonus point and that's gonna matter for him in his battle with ryan griffin for the regular season championship because as you can see there's ryan griffin pitting with the elite with these group this group so gonna be interesting to see we got a couple guys staying out with Alex, Austin Runkle stayed out. I think Cam Stevenson did as well. Kasim and Nan actually pitted the lap before. So he should be... Oh, he's going to have to wait for Michaels to leave, to get in before he can leave. Yeah. It's going to be a slow stop for the one as a result. Yeah, and Michaels had to slow down and wait for somebody who is leaving the pits to be able to enter uh, his pit stall there. So here comes Alex Rajeparub down the pit lane. So we'll see if there's any delay for the three car, the 18 is all right coming out of the pits and we'll see but it looks Delello, like Delello got yeah. ahead of michaels on so that michaels cycle and so did riley slow, hooper yeah slow stop there for joshua michaels so we'll see what happens with the three car um if the three is able to maintain that position he was already in he should be leading this race but i don't know maybe the extra lap on these tires is going to help out or the crowded pit lane will hurt them we'll find out as Delello comes around yeah, he should be scored. Yeah, there he there's is. So all the way on the track already. And there's yeah. Alex exiting the pits right now. We'll see where De there's Delello as well. Oh, boy, it's gonna be close. And this is gonna be very close because Alex is still getting up to speed. Delello is going in full song. I think this is gonna be a very close battle for the lead when this all shakes out. Alex now up to full song as well. He is gonna keep the lead, but only barely. Oh, but very close. I thought Delello was going to go for it. He still might. He's right on the bumper of the three car. He goes to the bottom. Is there grip down there? It looks like there is. Oh, man. Both these cars on brand new tires. And Alex just rockets out of the corner and keeps that lead. Wow. So that's the pit stop cycle for you right there. Joshua Michaels lost two, possibly three positions on that pit cycle. And Delello moves up. Alex Rajeparu moves up into the lead. What an interesting uh, a twist that has been put in this race from the pit stops. Yeah, so that I think that just goes to show you the, what that experience matters. The experience of the winningest driver of all time in this series against the driver who's never won in this series before. And that just came to a head right there. Zdolello could have made a move there, but Alex was prepared for it, and he made a move to block it. That is the key 
to having success in this series. You need to know when's the right time to go. And right now we still have 41 cars on this racetrack, and they're all on the lead lap right now. Yeah, well, we've been watching this race the whole time, right? And we've seen so far under green flag conditions, it is extremely difficult to pass. And the reason is that you just can't get underneath somebody on the straightaway. You're, you're, it's almost all corner, this track. So it's extremely difficult to get around. Right there, Delello had the, a great opportunity, had a huge head of steam on the three car, but the three car took that out, outer line away, gave him the bottom. Gave him the bottom, but took the outside lane, got a ton of momentum off, up off the corner, and, and straightened out his exit so that he could put the power down. And that's exactly what he needed to just barely keep the lead, and now he's driving away. And we're closing in on halfway as well in this race. We're on lap 39 at the moment. There you see the scoring update. Alex has now a three-tenths of a second lead over Zachary Delella, but Joshua Michaels is starting to catch these guys a little bit. He was more than a second back. Now he's just under a second off. He has gotten past the 69 of Hooper. So, if these guys keep battling amongst themselves, we could see Michaels even claw his way back into this. Yeah, yeah, and do not count him out. I mean, that 18 car is down right now, but absolutely is not out. Sitting there in third place. And we saw uh, just in that last pit stop cycle that crazy things can't happen. So, they, they learned. The Joshua Michaels and his crew, they know now that maybe they shouldn't pit uh, on a crowded pit road. They might get trapped or maybe use that inner lane on the pit lane when you're entering so that nobody ends up to the inside of you uh, as they're leaving the pits and then you can't get into yours. That's, I mean, you learn, you live and you learn, and that is definitely a learning moment, but do not count the 18 out. It is a fast vehicle that he is driving, and he's a great driver, so he could definitely get up here and mix it up. And remember, Joshua Michaels has that number one pit stall from winning pole today. So true. he's got to he's got to trundle all the way down that pit lane to get to his pit box. And but then he's got an immediate straight shot out. So yep. that's one yep. of the positives of getting that number one wow. pit stall wow. with pole. Man, you were you, you spot on <laughs> with that. Delello yeah. almost had a run on Alex. He closed to within a tenth, but I think the three saw it coming. Yeah, that, he is all over the bumper of Alex Trejeparu. He isn't at this very moment, but he was right on him. I mean, almost pushing him through the corner. This 03 car is quick right now. Yeah, he might have lost a, a little bit. He lost half a tenth on that lap, but he's still right there in contention in the mix. And Michaels has started to fall off a little bit. He's back to now over a second behind. He's now a second and a quarter off the lead. So well, this could be... Started Sorry, he started playing defense, I guess, uh, against the 69 car. So that's, I think, why he's maybe, he was on offense, but the 69 caught him. He's got to do a little bit of blocking now. And Zachary Delello, he, he is able to gain a ton through turns one and two. Watch how he, whenever he's able to hook lower on the track, he's able to get a lot of downforce on that car um, and really rip around that corner at the same speed as Alex Trejeparub, but he's a little bit lower on the track. So he's able to cut the course a little bit and watch, Alex is just going to have to navigate, and he's going to get in front of that 03 car. Watch him here. He's going to get right in front of him and take all the air away from that car. 03 starts low, but then slides up the track a little bit. Yeah, that grip just isn't there. So, yeah, very interesting. That 03 car has a little bit of magic underneath it when, he, when he's able to wrap the bottom, but it is tough uh, today at this racetrack. Yeah, and you said it at the top of the show, all that dirty air on the on the 03 is really hurting him in the corners and this track is pretty much almost all corner so you really need clean air on the nose of that car to be able to go places and no one's got the cleaner air cleaner air than alex for jeff right now who has a steady lead still about three tenths over delello and the whole top 10 now separated by about 10 seconds yeah you know here's here's another thing just to go back to joshua michaels a little bit and that he's fallen off this group he ran out front for the entirety of that first run. So he wasn't able to, he didn't know what his car was going to do once it was in traffic. And that's something that really, I mean, you got to know what your car is going to do in traffic because that's just, uh, you're going to end up in traffic at some point. So they weren't able to adjust 
quite for that. They were adjusting for the car being out front, and that might be why he's struggling a little bit in traffic. So that 18 car, watch him after the next pit stop. He's going to have adjusted, and he's going to be really fast. We were taking a look back further back in the top 10. You can see it's a six-second gap between Glenn Mixon in fifth and Nicky Martinez in sixth. That is an incredible margin at a small place like this. So kudos to the top five for keeping this margin as wide as it is you see the d4 car is running at the very tail end of the field ahead of will harrison they are about to get lapped by the three and the o3 so timing it the timing of this could be critical because we're now in the window where you can make it the rest of the way on one more stop yeah so the crews or these crew chiefs and the drivers are going to have to be asking themselves uh do you want to try to navigate through some lap traffic before you make your pit stop or do you want to make that pit stop as soon as you catch them I would say that you might want to make that pit stop as soon as you catch the lap traffic. Don't even deal with them yet. Deal with them in the in the last run of the race. But right now, don't let them slow you down. Go and make your pit stop. Finish it off strong. Um, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. Maybe they're going to try to navigate a little bit. Maybe Alex Fergeparub is thinking he can get through traffic better than Zachary Delello, And he'll be able to drive away from him a little bit. Or maybe the reverse Zachary Delello thinking that he can get through traffic better than the three car and maybe advance that position before he ever gets into the pits. So we'll see what happens, what they decide. Um, but yeah, lap 51 of 80 right now, you can make it all the way to the end. Uh, and the window is open and the lap cars are quickly, uh, quickly approaching just ahead. Yeah, you see that red and black 55 of Will Harrison just in front of Alex Ruggiero. This is going to be a critical moment because... We saw the overcut work for Alex Fergeparib on the first cycle. Does Zachary Delello try it on the three this time? Or does Alex stay out long here? Try and... Cause, and who knows? If a caution comes out in the middle of the pit cycle, that could really shake things up. But it doesn't look like it's going to impact the top five because they have, they're have miles clear of sixth place Martinez. So they, they're pretty much content to just run their own race. But here comes Harrison. This could, could be decision time. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I think that one of the main things is that these crew chiefs are going to have to watch when everybody's pitting. I I would be saying that I absolutely do not want to make my pit stop on a busy pit road. That's what we saw last time. That's why Joshua Michaels lost the lead. Um, the busy pit road is going to be chaotic. It's going to be an unnecessary risk for the team leading this race or possibly in second, third, or fourth. Um, yeah, I think that you got to pit with a clear pit road, easy in, easy out, stay, get back out on the track. We'll see if Alex is able to pass this 55 car. He should be able to without too much difficulty. And you see Delello's actually gained quite a little bit of time on Alex in this three car. But he does get past Harrison. He puts the Brit a lap down. So now yeah. it's up to Zachary Delello. What can he do to try and get past Will Harrison? Because if he can't get by this 55 in a hurry, that opens the door for Alex to get a really big lead. Well, he got stuck behind him right there. He didn't catch him at a very uh, favorable spot. He kind of went low uh, that last time around, and he was coming up out of the corner, and he really couldn't use all the track that he wanted to, and now he's sitting there stuck behind that 55, letting the three car drive away. I think that this is why Alex wanted to stay out right here. I was just saying it earlier that he was able to get by the 55, and now he has a great opportunity to put a gap between himself and Zachary Delello. That's just buying uh, time during your pit stop. You're able to spend just that much more time in the pits if you have to. It's a little bit more wiggle room. It's a little bit more confidence for the crew. They don't know that they that they have to be absolutely perfect right here. So that's a great uh, situation for Alex. And I would say if I'm Zachary Delello, I'm thinking about pitting right now. Stuck behind the 55. Get down there in the pits. Make it happen. I'm sure that's it's on his mind, but and you can see the, the red. Oh, here comes Delello on Will Harrison. Is he going to make the move stick into turns three and four this time around? Delello has to let off just a little bit, and the 55 stays ahead. This is going to be a really tricky situation for Zachary Delello. He's losing heaps of time. He's has got now eight tenths of a second to Alex Fischerberg. This could be a really critical moment in this stage of the race as we approach 20 laps to go. Yeah, so Alex is absolutely not going to pit right now as, as long as that 03 is stuck behind the lap car. He is just going to stay out there and continue gaining time. Um, Zachary Delello is going to have to be the first one to make the move here, I think, because that 03 car, um, yeah, cannot get around the 55, has caught him in a bad spot twice now. 
um, and has lost over a second uh, to our leader in the three. So we'll see uh, when that 03 decides to make the pit stop. But right now, it's even losing time to the 55. This is not a good situation for Delello. Oh, and you saw the tires screeching on that three car as he hustles it through that corner. We now have 21 laps to go. The gap is now nine tenths of a second between Alex and Dolello. But you, you're right. That 55 is proving to be a very tough hurdle for Dolello to overcome. So I think Dolello just needs to duck on the pit road at the earliest opportunity. Get, but he, he seems to want to run out this fuel run, which I can't blame him for. But I, but at this point, you really need to get out of out from behind the 55 if you're going to have a shot at winning this thing. Yeah, well, I'll tell you what, he's gaining a little bit of time, and I think that the main reason we haven't seen anybody pit yet is because if you pit and there's anyone, even one car that stays out, you end up in the danger zone. Here's Delello on the bottom trying to finally make that move on the 55. He's going to complete it here coming out of the corner. That was a great move. And now look how close he is. He's still within striking distance. Valix for Jeparub, the three car, did not capitalize as much as he could have on that situation right there. So I think that it might be pit stop time uh, at this point. But I'll tell you what, it, if you pit right now and, and some people are staying out and you go a lap down and then the caution comes out, you are out of it. So I think that that's probably why everybody has stayed out for as long as they can right here. You kind of want to uh, not be that first one in just so that you don't get caught in the danger zone but right now that's looking a lot like maybe there should be a pit stop cycle that starts to happen <laughs> i don't know well they've gone they've gone far enough now to where it should be they can definitely make it to the end from here because they it they went 32 33 laps on the first cycle they've gone about 30 on the second one so within the next lap or two these guys should be on their way in, so we'll see what the, we'll see what the leaders do. We'll see if Delello gets pulls an undercut or if Alex tries something different this time around. Only well, we're gonna find out shortly. But these yeah. guys are just yep. Here comes Delello. He's making the move. Okay, all right. So it's gonna be the same as last time. Alex Rajeparub staying out, uh, continuing to lead this race just like last time. From second place, he stayed out and continued to lead. All these people are beating him onto the pit lane. Yeah, and here's and Ryan Griffin. Lane. He's doing. He's he's got. He's got to be thinking. Do what the three doesn't do at this point. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's the only way you're going to have a chance to make up some points um, on a day where he was running in 10th, and obviously Alex is out here uh, dominating the race since that first pit stop. And right here, we'll see if he ducks down. He won't. Uh, is that even the entry? Yeah, it was. So he's going to stay out for yet another lap. This is an overcut situation. He's out there. We'll see. It's a little bit nerve-wracking here because this three, I don't, I just don't know the lap times. If the three is uh, able to put up a lap time comparable uh, to the ones that on fresh tires, you know, it's not a ton of wear yep, here. Here he comes. comes. Pits. Yeah. So Alex, right. Alex Vergeperud pits with 15 laps to go. Glenn Mixon's coming with him. That should put Zachary Delello in a good position to catch. However, whoa, that was close oh between gosh. Runkle and Joshua Michaels. Oh. Runkle was coming to pit. Joshua was coming out. That was a very sketchy situation for everybody on that racetrack. That yeah, could have been you. really bad. Somebody has some damage. We'll see. Alex has, has an easy in right here. Doesn't have to slow down at all for anybody. Now the 91 Quinton right in front of him. So that's going to be good because there's not going to be any issue coming out. We'll watch that three car. Here he goes. And the caution is out. Oh, this changes a lot here. This could be bad for a lot of guys. I think it was Kenneth Grant that was the cause of the caution. You saw him pull up into the pit lane. Yeah. This changes everything as far as this race is concerned, and it could shape up the regular season title as well. So the question is, who was leading the race when the caution came out? Right now, our scoring says the three car, but that was calculated at the line. I think it's going to be Cam Stevenson who leads this wow. race. Yeah, it is. He just cycled out to the lead. My goodness, and Zachary Delello is going to be ahead of Alex Rajeparub. My goodness. Oh, oh but not for much longer. He's in a crash. He hits his teammate. And Henry Thomas and Alex is out of oh, it. He's got no. some heavy damage on the front of that three car. And Alex, after dominating this race, he led 55 laps of it. Now he's out. Oh, my goodness. That is absolutely absurd. I'm not exactly sure what happened, but we've got some very slow cars and some very fast cars just trying to get catch 
catch up to the caution here. That's completely crazy. I think Cam Stevenson was actually on pit oh, road. Oh, Delello's pitting. He had he hit his teammate. I think Cody go for it. Oh. And he's going to have to come on the pit road. He should be able to continue. But for Alex Fischer, Peru, he dominated this race. Now he's out. Mm. That is, that is, I don't know. I'm speechless about that. That is absolutely incredible. Yeah, Delello should be able to continue, but he'll be at the very tail end of the field. You see Goforth and Meyer make their way around. You see Logan Jones in the 94. He's got a lot of damage. The leader of this race is going to be Glenn Mixon now in the 19. We haven't seen what he can do up front yet. We're about to find out. And we're yeah. and when, by the time the restart happens, we'll be in within 10 laps to go. So this will be a single file restart all the way. Wow. So, yeah, Glenn Mixon started fourth on the day. Um, so that's not a terrible starting spot. There's obviously speed in that car. Now he finds himself in first place ahead of the 18. Here's Zach Delello coming back out. Yeah, we should get a replay of what happened to him in the rest of the field soon. But, man, you've really got a feel for the 3 and the 03. They were, they were in a class of the field today, and now they're going to have barely anything to show for it. Yeah, that's just some chaos right there. I mean, that... I mean, it's crazy. We had a caution, and then we had a crash, um, and that one under the yellow flag. That's just incredible. Leaders involved. Wow. So, yeah, Kenneth Grant, it was the 53 that brought out the caution. He lost the engine. He must have missed a shift coming out of the pit lane, and that just detonated the motor on that 53 Camaro, and he's he's got no speed left to make it to the rest, make it back to the pit lane. He's going to have to pull it over on the side of the track. He's right in the firing line, too. They had no choice there but to throw that yellow flag. Yeah, I look at everybody flying so quick by. Yeah, absolutely the right call. Oh, and Hayden Clair almost hit him, too. That could have been very bad. And now we're going to take a look and see what happened to Delello. Man... As if he, he can't, just can't get a break, can he? So Delello was in a fantastic position. He would have cleared the three had this caution not come out. But and oh, they're slowing for the yellow, and he does hit his teammate in Cody Goforth. That's where he got the damage from. Alex with some significant damage on the front of that three car. We'll find out how he got that. But that's going to be a rough meeting for Team Day Spring after this race. You can see he, Alex was right behind the mess, and he plows uh, into the back of Jonathan no, Lawson no. in the 16, who was trying to avoid his teammate, Henry Thomas, spinning out. So, pretty... Double right accident. Yeah, so the lights are out on the pace car. We will be going green this time, and Glenn Mixon is going to line up fifth in, fifth in line, but he will be the leader behind four cars who are on the very tail end of the lead lap. Okay, so this is going to be interesting. Nobody is in clean air as far as the top... Uh, top leaders in this group um and we saw how tough it is to pass especially that 55 car um the 03 had a big problem with the 55 car as him and the three got there so uh, we'll see what happens with glenn mixon here but joshua michaels um second place and there's the green flag and the 55 has a terrible problem on the start he is absolutely not going joshua michaels dro drops back down the whole field going by the 55 car in the outside lane who has not been accelerating at all so now uh, there has not been any issues with everybody. I can't believe that didn't cause a crash. But uh, Glenn Mixon remains out front, and Joshua Michaels is knocking on the door, uh, trying to take the lead away. This is going to be a two-horse race for the win, unless Cam Stevenson can get there. He's gotten past Hooper to move up into third. This could be a career day for the 22 car of Cam Stevenson looking for his first top 10 finish of his career in the Nitro National Series. But we're coming to six laps to go this time. Glenn Mixon starting to pull away from Michaels just a little bit. Can Michaels get on the offense or will he have to defend against the hard-charging Cam Stevenson? And look at Ryan Griffin in a race where Alex Vichet-Baroub is going to finish 38th out of the race. This is going to absolutely allow Ryan Griffin to extend his points lead. Yeah, definitely will. Ryan Griffin has capitalized in a big way here. Um, on the accidents during that caution flag. And yeah, he is up to fifth place. He was running in 10th to 12th all day, not even really inside the top 10. And now uh, he is having a stellar performance, top five. That's what makes a championship uh, in, in this series is turning a bad day into an average to good day, um, especially when your competition is out of the race. So that is a great job from the 92 team. But Glenn Mixon out in front of the field by a quarter of a second over Joshua Michaels. 
where you've got five, four and a half laps to go now from Simtel Park. And Glenn Mixon is turning this race into his own. He could try and get around this 84 car, but I don't know if he need, he really should try. Because if he can do that, he'll put a big buffer between himself and Joshua Michaels. That could be key as we now have four laps to go. Yeah, and I think that that 84 is just fast enough that, it, you know, he's going to be a tough car to pass right here. But I'll tell you what, if he goes for the pass and then makes a mistake, doesn't clear him, has to run side by side with him, that will absolutely open the door for not only Joshua Michaels, but it'll also open the door for Cam Stevenson, who might have a chance. Here goes Glenn Mixon down to the bottom. He's going to get side by side with Ryan Soper in there. He's going to go through the corner, but he's going to slide. Not going to have enough. He won't clear him. So here comes the 18 and the 22 from behind. What are they going to do? They're going to have a huge head of steam on the leader going into the corner. Yeah, Michaels is ready to strike. He's been in this situation before. He knows how to win races. He's won three of them in his career. Could this be his fourth right here? As Stevenson drives to the inside of Michaels for second. Wow. That, that opens the door in a big way for Glenn Mixon to run away with it. Now he's gotten past the 84. Yeah, but Joshua Michaels is already working on him. And here comes the 69 car on the inside of the 22 for position. So they're going to be side by side going to this corner. Joshua Michaels has cleared the 84 car now, and they're still side by side for third. It looks like the 69 will prevail over Cam Stevenson, who started 25th in this race. He's running in fourth. That is absolutely incredible. But here's Glenn Mixon leading the way. On the white flag lap, through the dog leg for the final time. Glenn Mixon might not have been the best car today, but he took advantage when the, when the cars that were better than him had a crash. So, for three and four, for the final time, it is going to be Glenn Mixon getting second win of the season, and he does it at Simtel Park. A great drive from him to take advantage of the situation. He gets a victory when he probably wasn't expecting one. Joshua Michaels <clears throat> will bring it home in second place, and after a day where he led the opening stint, started on pole, a runner-up finish will do him good. Riley Hooper gets his career best finish in third. Ryan Griffin moved past Cam Stevenson as well to finish fourth. That's a great run for the 92. Cam Stevenson fell back to fifth, but that's still a career best finish for him. Nicky Martinez comes home sixth place on the day, and it looks like we got a little tangle coming into the pits. That's more teammates. That's Meyer and Liara getting into it. But for Zachary Delello, he did everything right today. He got caught up in a crash, 32nd place at the end of the day. Wow. Well, yeah, that's absolutely a heartbreaker for Delello and then also for Alex for Jeperu. Both of those drivers deserved to have a chance at winning this race, and neither of them got it after some accidents during the caution period. Um, that probably shouldn't have happened anyway, but... <laughs> After a frantic finish, I'll tell you what, that 19 car, Glenn Mixon, put on a show trying to get by that 84 car. He wasn't able to do it, but he kept the 18 behind him, and that was just an incredible performance from Glenn Mixon to hold him off for that little last stint, the sprint to the finish, if you will, right there. So Glenn Mixon comes out on top uh, in, a, in an amazing turn of events, a great race uh, that we watched today. Wow, drama-filled, um, and the storylines after this one going into the next week, I, I would not miss that for anything and next week we head to the most hallowed ground in all of motorsports the indianapolis motor speedway where the nitro national cars will take on their road course it's going to be a lot of fun for those guys i'm sure and we're looking forward to seeing that as much as you are so from duke and second from myself as well we say goodbye from simtel park congratulations to glenn mixon he might not been the, might have been the fastest car but he was certainly the luckiest he gets a big win today